Hi everybody, this is Dr. B, and I thought I'd go over this week's homework for the IB12 class. So this is IB12 chemistry, this is the assignment as you see it. I'm really just going to read it and cover a few details, but I hope this might help some people that may have questions about it. So the assignment is to come up with a just about finished internal assessment. You have submitted a few iterations so far, and this should be, I hope, the near to last one. Now having said that, I know there's some of you who are in uh, good position. You are nearly done, and this next one should get you there. Others are um, in various different states. Please uh, keep the faith. Uh, add a little more to it. If you still don't think it's enough, write it anyhow. I can work with you guys, and uh, I really would love to see you come through uh, with this, and I'd like to help as much as I can. So let me go ahead and read the assignment. Uh, before I mention the assignment, note that I've scheduled a hangout meeting that will be taking place at Mon Monday, March 30th at 9 a.m. Actually, I think that's incorrect, so I'm going to cancel this whole video. Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. B, and I thought I'd go over this week's assignment for our IB12 class. This is a 50-point assignment, and it is... The idea is to come up with a close to finished uh, version of your internal assessment, your IA. Uh, many of you are close to finish. Some of you have a long ways to go, but please hang in there. Uh, give me an update. I can work with you, and I'm confident that we can reach the deadline, which is sadly April 9th. It's a very uh, quick deadline. On the other hand, we have what? We have 10 or 11 days to get there, so I'm sure this is something. We can all pull off if we put our minds to it. I'm going to go ahead and read the assignment, and I'll add in uh, details when we can. So here's what you guys actually see, and now the link works. Hi, everyone. Before I mention the assignment, note that I've scheduled a mandatory meeting for today. That's March 30th at 1030. So I hope to see you all at 1030. And I'm just probably going to say the same things that I'm saying now, but... I'll see your faces on the screen, and we can uh, go over anything we need to. As you may have heard, it's now due April 9th. Fortunately, we have had a full week devoted to the experiments. We've done some uh, rough drafts, and hopefully, you know, you can get this done. For the next 50-point iteration, that's this week's assignment, we're shooting for a near-finished version. Uh, I've modeled the homework after a fairly high-scoring IA that was done by Miriam Kish. I'm going to link it now and show you a few things about it that I liked that you might uh, want to keep in mind when you're writing it. Uh, here's her title, A Statistical Analysis of the Effect of Catalysts on the Oxidation of Alkenes. She had a foundational paper on which this was based. She was the only one last year that did an experiment that did not have an experiment. So I should say she did her IA that was based on this paper. I would have liked to have seen a more focused title However, it gets the job done. And here's how she organized things. She immediately stated her research question. And then for each part, she has subparts that are literally how these things are graded, which I actually think is a great idea. Um, you can find this link on our class website and uh, also on the homework site. So uh, I, I do recommend you have a look at it. So let me go back to the assignment. And when you look at this IA, notice how it's arranged based on how it's scored. This is a strategy that both the internal and external assessors, that includes me, do appreciate. As for all previous versions for each section, your writing should be based on your experiments, if you performed experiments, or the experiments in the paper on which it's based. And you should have, at this point, a foundational paper, one in particular that you've selected. If you don't do that, you run the risk of making your paper simply sounding like a review, which is not the goal of an IA. Also, I'd like to remind you again that papers without student-based experiments should do more than provide a review. That's what I just said. They should go a little further. Now, that doesn't have to be very hard. You could just take some of their data and interpret it a different way or show a different graph for it. You know, in other words, not just simply a rehash of what they did. Please be sure your IA this week includes the following. So I'm going to make it worth five points for each one of these topics or subtopics. This may require adjusting things from the way you have them now. Now, if you totally love the way you have them now and you really don't want to change, I can work with you. I'll just try to check that you have each one of these covered. This is an excellent organizational me uh, method if you want to take advantage of it, and I kind of think you should.
So you have you should have a title at this point that states what you discovered. Hers did so only in a general manner. Have a after that have a highly focused research question. The focus part is what makes it get high points rather than low. And then an introduction that can be subdivided into the personal engagement part. That's usually pretty easy points. The relevance of it, you can relate it to the relevance for the planet. You can relate to the relevance for individuals. Uh, that also shouldn't be too difficult to do. And then the environmental and ethical concerns, which could tie into the relevance. Then five points for a methodology section that includes five points each for these subsections. A summary of the experiment. Data in the form of a big table or multiple tables. Now, some of you say, I don't have um, data because I didn't do an experiment. Well, you should be using the data from the paper on which it's based, and there should be plenty of data there. Data processing, now you interpret the data with graphs, several would be nice. And if you are working with a paper rather than your own experiments, this is a great place to create your own graphs and thus extrapolate. What your graphs show can be the title that states what you discovered. Finally, a conclusion and then some professionally formatted endnotes. I'm struggling to get people to use endnotes. Uh, it's the way almost all professional scientific papers are organized. Um, some of you have footnotes. If you absolutely refuse to do the endnotes and want to do the footnotes, I'll try to work with you. Okay, so that's the assignment for this week. If you have any questions, please contact me. Thanks, everybody.